Uh, I also saw Kessler on Twitter wanted to argue with you, uh, but I don't I don't see him in here, so we'll see uh, if he jumps. Or Jason in. Kessler? Yeah. <laughs> wow, I haven't heard that name in a while. Yeah, he's been on the show uh, a couple times now. Um, I, I, I can bring it up because um, I know it's bogus, but I, I'll bring it up anyway. Basically. Um, I mean, that's my view. He can come on and lay on the other side if he wants. But I've talked about this before on Twitter. Uh, basically, they cooked up some fake gab posts uh, and, and been sharing it around um, and trying to, like, I don't know what, what really what it is. Uh, trying to, uh, yeah, it wasn't fake. He deleted it. He actually posted that. Uh, where is it? Uh, something about the age of consent or whatever. Uh, the age of consent? What? Yeah. Have you not seen this? I've seen them no. passing it around because um, certain sectors, I guess some might say the Wignat uh, sector or whatever, uh, have passed this around. Um, here we go. I'll go ahead and pull it up. <laughs> you dumb bitch. This doesn't even make sense, by the way, the, the whole the tweet. Like, it do, you no, <laughs> nobody would say this. You dumb it bitches. Sound like me. <laughs> I know, that's what I'm saying. Like it doesn't it's not even an it's not ironic either. Like there's nothing <laughs> You dumb bitches don't know most groipers, including myself, would like to see the age of consent lowered or at least talked about. With an exclamation point uh at the end, just in case you doubt it. Now I have no doubt that this is not accurate. Yeah, this is not real. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm sorry, it's just I've never I don't care. I, I don't think I've ever even said anything about the age of consent. Like I don't care. I think I'm 33, man. You know what I mean? It's like I'm not dating a fucking 24 year old, let alone like anything lower than that, man. It's like, are you kidding me? Yeah, don't. That would be my advice if you <laughs> if yeah. you ever have the uh, temptation to dabble a little lower. Don't do that. Uh, yeah. Legal, of course. Don't even no. 18, yeah. 19. Don't go there. Yeah, so what a was, weird thing to like say that I was talking about. Like, I, I, like I, if you're gonna like like Photoshop shit about me or like make a like fake post or whatever, but like at least make it look like sound like me, I guess. Like you dumb bitches. Like why would I? I don't even talk like that, man. What the fuck? Yeah, I don't. By the way, he's here, so we'll bring him on. But uh, I saw it was Rand's uh, second in command. Dumb bitch. Sounds like she's got. She sounds like the retarded uh, Victoria's Secret model, except she doesn't look like her. Uh, and so I'd seen her putting this uh, putting this tweet out, and it was right around the time I was starting to kind of get tired of their nonsense. And I was like, dude, that's clearly not. That's not real. You have no archive for it at all. They're like, oh, he tweeted. He sent it out real quick on Gavin and then deleted it right away. It's like, okay, you know what? There would be a million archives. Well, that's why it says two days, right? It says like two yeah. days old. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Uh, oh, you know what? I didn't even think about that, Beardson. <laughs> Can we pull yeah. that back up? Yeah, yeah. It's two, it's like two days, and then nobody, you know, somebody okay. got to screenshot it, but not to archive it. Yeah, no, that's up, right? Yeah. Yeah, now where is the, uh, yeah, here goes, uh, this is um, their evidence. It's, it wasn't fake. He deleted it. He actually posted this. So you left it up for two days, I guess, in this guy's uh, thing. Anyway, we'll bring on Kessler because he's going to start about Hey, I haven't used Discord in years. I don't know how the audio settings are supposed to work, but I'm here. Yeah, well, we can't. Yeah, and it's fine. I wasn't trying to be mean to you, but I can't. We can't do it on the delay. Like you listen and we wait. That's just inoperable. Right? That's just not gonna. That won't work. But anyway, thank God for the roadcasters. I mentioned called you up. Here you are. And again, I already went on record, and I've argued with people about this before. I don't think there's any legitimacy uh, to to the to the gab post. But uh, so I don't want to act like I haven't just said that because I did. But I um, got you here, and you can say whatever you want. Here's Beardson. Yeah, Beardson. Uh, so I'm trying to figure out what's going on with you and Gab, because I know you're shitting all over Gab, basically saying it's a crappy product. At the uh -huh. same time, uh, Torba is paying your buddy, Quintez, like 20 grand to, you know, promote AFPAC, uh, uh -huh. which is a little inconsistent. But the main thing is the controversy over your age of consent post, because uh, those are going well, around. Let's, let's, let's say, but first off, not my age of consent post, it's fake. Okay, so I'm just let me just read the one and you can confirm or deny whether it's true or not. It says I mean, we you looked, dumb. We just looked at it and then I said it was wait, fake, it's like, All right, all right, all right. You dumb bitches don't know most groipers, including myself, would like to see the age of consent lowered or at least talked about. Do you say that or not say that? I did not say that. Okay, but it, the substance of the thing is true, right? Quintez no. has uh, has denied that age of consent is a valid concept. I have no idea. 
Yeah, yeah, just like uh, Jack Murphy. You remember people were talking about him denying uh, age of consent and saying it was okay to have children. I have composed by uh, Murphy. Yeah, I don't know what every single person has ever said about age of consent because I don't give a fuck about the age of consent at all. Like, yeah, but I'm talking about your buddy that you said it's a real human being and everything. Like, uh, yeah. and and um, so I just want <clears throat> to confirm about age of consent because he did a show. Where he uh, was, he the name of the show was Judge Roy Moore did nothing wrong, and the context of that is so allegations of Judge Roy Moore sexually assaulting a fourteen-year-old girl when he was thirty-two. And are you, so, uh, are you calling me to like argue about something that Nick said? Is that is that the yeah? Well, I'm saying the here? substance of that yeah post is correct, essentially, right? That the Groypers no, do. I don't, think I don't agree that with that. that. I didn't, I didn't question if he's Again, like, you know, I'm not, I, I, I don't keep track of every hey, single word that Nick says. Stuttering, man, just answer the question. Do you think what that uh, it's okay for the Groypers to question the age of consent? I'm, I don't have an opinion on the age of consent. I'm not I'm Louis Thoreau. Stop Gripers. stuttering, you little bitch. Answer <laughs> the question. You're really mad, man. You're, hey, you need to take a chill <laughs> pill, man, I think. Well, look, I'm just treating you like you treated me after Charlottesville because I remember you had me on uh, you had me on your uh, weekly show. Which I think I've been proven you, uh, on that point look, because you don't even know how fucking Discord works. So and uh, you know you know what you've been rally, proven so. right on? You said that uh, the Charlottesville organizers should be blamed because people were docked and like three people got arrested. Then you and your buddy Fuentes promoted January 6th. 730 uh, people in counting have been arrested for that. They're sitting in prison well, sure in detainment. Well, you, no, wait, Fuentes, Kessler, and Alaska are becoming millionaires uh, going to conferences Kessler, with Congress. Hold on, wait, wait. Kessler, you got to let him respond. I, we, we have no problem with you coming on arguing. I like that. But you got to let him respond. Go ahead, Beardson. Well, I mean, he's sitting there saying that we promoted January 6th. We promoted a Stop the Steal event. We didn't promote, or uh, you know, storming the Capitol and breaking the law, which, you know, sucks. I mean, like, I feel bad for those guys. I really do. And my heart goes out to every single one of them. Uh, I think they're being persecuted by the state. Uh, but, yeah, no, I think Charlottesville was absolutely a disaster. Tons of people got docked. Some, I mean, people in the state are still paying the price for it. It sucks. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, the same thing with January 6th. You know, know the difference is that probably 700 more people are facing uh, charges. But curiously, you and Quintez, Quintez was quoted as saying, uh, ignore the police, overturn the barricades. That's incitement. Why hasn't he been charged? Thanks to Alaska, well, was sure inside being, the Capitol being, uh, filming the faces of the people Congress, who are but... facing charges. Why is he, like, getting to hang around with the congressman and making thousands of dollars uh, going around macing people on video? How does that funny. work? He's funny and awesome, and you're not... Yeah, and that was the justification that you gave about why you thought it was okay for Fuentes to invite people to uh, basically a, a, a trap, a legal trap, uh, on what, January 6th after hypocritically um, turning on the Charlottesville people. You said, well, the difference between the Charlottesville people and Nick is I like Nick. That's fucked up, man. You're yeah. an inconsistent, no, 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 immoral let's, son let's of a get, bitch. Let's get one thing straight here, okay? Let's get one thing straight here. I feel bad for people that went to Charlottesville and gotten trapped by your shitty-ass conference or shitty-ass event. I feel bad for the rank-and-file people. The people that need to be blamed are you and your incompetence. Uh, I had a permit. I, the difference was that there yeah. we got attacked by Antifa. Your people uh -huh. didn't get attacked by anybody. You didn't uh -huh. have a permit. You went in where you weren't supposed to. It was a uh -huh. low-level misdemeanor trespassing for most of these people, and they're being railroaded. I agree with that. But it's uh -huh. totally inconsistent that you guys turned on the Charlottesville people, no, jumped was, on them for your own benefit. So you could basically try like to take over benefit. from the people who are facing political persecution. So, yes, I agree that January 6th people are facing political persecution, but so were the Charlottesville people. And you uh -huh. and Nick Fuentes used that situation to knife those people in the back so you could replace all of the all right people at Charlottesville. It's fucked up. No, here's the thing, man. I do. I feel bad for anybody that's paying the price. I have friends that went to Charlottesville, right? And and they had to pay the price for it. And it sucks, man. But here's the problem is you had absolutely no sort of judgment when it came to who you invited, who you let attend, who you, you had no quality control at all. And you had all these sorts of like fat You're the one to speak. You're talking like about that. You're not going to interrupt uh, me. Now, wait, so wait, Kessler, Kessler. Hold on. Upset, yeah. Right. Let him finish. Let him finish. Go ahead, Beardson. And we'll, I, we'll have plenty of time for you to talk. Go ahead. Go ahead, Beardson.
Yeah, take a chill pill, Kessler. I know you're upset, but, you know, just bring it down a little bit here. Uh, I'm talking to you like a reasonable, rational human being, and I'm trying to be rational and fair to you, even though you're coming at me with all sorts of, like, really deranged sort of bullshit. Um, but, no, I mean, there was absolutely no quality control. You invite guys like Mike Enoch and Richard Spencer who were trouble from the start, and you just weren't smart enough to recognize that, and now we'll look where they're at. They're, no, they're nowhere. But they're not doing anything. They're not accomplishing bullshit. anything. They're not, I, they're I, not they're right right your, I would, Again, again you're going to try to interrupt just me. Let, it's not going to work, man. I'm sorry. I'm, I, I'm not sure you know who I am, but I am the king of not getting interrupted, okay? I'll just keep fucking talking over you all night, and then we'll be here for fucking two hours, and Ralph's going to get pissed at both of us, all right? So take a chill pill, calm it down, and uh, we can have a talk. Again, you had no quality control over who you invited, who you attended, who you had mainlining this thing, and it blew up in your face. And unfortunately, there's a lot of bad actors involved at Charlottesville on both sides. I don't I don't totally disagree with you. Antifa attacked you guys. You had the permits and everything. You should have been able to just hold your fucking rally to begin with. But whenever you get a bunch of hot-tempered people on both sides in a situation like that, trouble is always going to happen every single time. Now yeah, you yeah, yeah you've got a turn. reasonable take, and I have no problem with that take, but at the time, you ambushed me. You brought me on your weekly sweat with Baked Alaska, and I've never well, forgotten how Baked you treated me. Because Baked Alaska was real. there, and he knows what happened to us. He got maced by these animals. Mm -hmm. And you guys hijacked me, and at the time, January 6th wasn't a twinkle in your eye. So you thought you could dump on me at the time that I was trying to expose this police chief who said, let them fight. There were serious, serious historical civil rights abuse. And whether you yes. like Richard Spencer or Mike Enoch or not, they don't deserve to be uh, attacked by Antifa in the streets to shut them down from having a permit. In retrospect, would I do totally an event nice. with those people again? No, I wouldn't. But it did strike me as a tad bit hy hypocritical after January 6th. You know, you can say there were bad optics at Charlottesville. Based Alaska, you know, has, you know, uh, he's a full 1488 guy. That's, there's no doubt about that. Uh, he has d done gas chamber memes. He told me himself he was a 1488 guy. Uh, <laughs> you know, I mean, yeah, you know, the guy face, introduces yeah. Cowboy sure. Tammy doing a speech, a uh, Hitler speech about the Jews and cheers about it. The guy has no remorse, even after like that Two Face video he did where he uh, pretended to be reformed or whatever. So you got your problems. You know, you had the Camp Auschwitz guy at January 6th. You had uh, Alex Jones, who, Bro. you know, debated. <laughs> <Again, laughs> like, what are you talking about, man? Like, you realize, like, Nick did not organize January 6th, right? Like, I, I just want you to know that. Like, Nick was did not bring 100,000 people. He was like, hey, Proud Boys and fucking, you know, three percenters, all you guys, come on. Like, you, re like, you realize this, right? Like, you dude, realize he was look, promoting it was a the fucking Trump rally. It was a deal. Trump rally, dude. Like, that's what he invited people to go to, the Trump rally. Right? Can we get that Camp Auschwitz guy on the show? Uh, I don't know if you have any. Look, look. There was a crew, there was a posse of Alex Jones, Ali Alexander, and Nick Fuentes that were going around to all these stop the steals. They had Nick riding around in a tank. The, tr the election was stolen. you got to yeah. show up on January 6th. They were all promoting it. You can't say that it didn't have anything to do with that. There were people with America First flags inside the Capitol. Uh, there were the, the lady with the skull mask that stole uh, Nancy Pelosi's uh, laptop. That, that was a Groiper. That was a Nick Fuentes fan. She came oh, because she he told her to come. And when he was addressing the crowd, Fuentes said, yay, we, we stopped the certification of the election. You know, that is what they've charged all these working class Joes with, is trying to obstruct an act of Congress. So why did the e-celebs and congressmen like Paul Gozar that were planning this with Fuentes and uh, Ali and uh, Alex Jones, why are they doing conferences getting rich? Because they're While smarter they're and more successful than you. Here's the thing, man. Can, can we, can we, I got a button here. Well, yeah, let, let, let me get in, but I'll, I'll say this. They did arrest some, they did arrest some e celebs. Straka, I think that he had to do some Nate time. Alaska got arrested. Yeah, arrested I mean, they did Nate. arrest some people. I, I mean, it's my opinion that they would have put a case on Nick if they could. Uh, but anyway, I, that's my thought on it. But anyway, go ahead, Beardson. I mean, you, you, you brought up a lot of stuff here, and I'm going to try to be charitable and address it as much as I can here. Uh, the reason why I brought you on the weekly sweat back in the day was because, A, you approached me to come on, okay, uh, because you wanted to promote another Charlottesville, which I thought was the most retarded fucking idea that I've ever heard in my entire life, which, again, totally vindicated on this. Totally, you're not going to interrupt me. I'm still talking here. Shut the fuck up, okay? Take a fucking chill pill. Calm down. Shut the fuck up. I'm still talking here. This is my turn. This is my time, Okay. I'm the fucking guest, and you're the fucking calling. Don't don't forget that, faggot. Anyways, um, 
But uh, yeah, you wanted to promote another Charlotte show. Oh, you're a real which was hero. Right? Again, you're not going to talk over me. This isn't going to fucking work, man. I don't know why you think you, that you're just going to like cut me off here. It's not going to work. Uh, you wanted to promote another Charlottesville. It was an absolutely retarded idea. So I brought you on because you're like, I have this whole dossier on Richard Spencer and I'm going to expose him, which I think I still have it saved somewhere that all this like stupid shit that you sent me. Cause like, I mean like, man, what a, what a real good friend you are, right? To sit there and try to betray someone's confidence like that and link intel about people to one another. Like you seem like a really charitable and awesome guy. Uh, and so, yeah, I thought you were a f- full on scumbag just for that alone. I hate Richard Spencer, but like doing that kind of shit, doing that kind of like dirty back alley bullshit, I think is really disingenuous and wrong. And I, by the way, if you want to like sit there and contest it with me, I still have all the DMs screenshotted and saved on my phone. So if you really want to go through that, we can. But um, anyways, uh, this whole idea of like, oh, Nick, Nick did, uh, he organized January 6th. Not true. He didn't organize it. He told everybody to go to the fucking Trump rally. And then they were going to have a small little rally afterwards on the on the lawn. He he, knew, he wasn't promoting and telling people to storm the Capitol or anything like that. I don't know where you're like getting this whole idea that like Nick commands like Alex Jones's Infowars fans and stuff like this. This is all like very disingenuous and wrong. And I just think it, it just sounds like to me you have a really big axe to grind because your thing failed and Nick's is succeeding. That's what it really comes across to me. Oh, Look, just- I. I openly talk about the issues with Richard Spencer. This isn't some secret thing. Like, your buddies were the ones who recorded Richard Spencer in private. And we can go into that, uh, doing the SIG Hiles and stuff. And then you you organized that to be released with Milo on your servers. So what? don't come to me with that <laughs> bullshit. <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about? I've never had contact with Milo until like a month ago. What I'm, talking, what I'm talking about is stuff that was released in our court case stuff that he okay. had to turn over in discovery that were public documents that were talked about in the local newspaper, the daily progress. So don't come to me. Like I'm betraying somebody's confidence. Your, your crew is the one who does that. All right. I, mean, again, but, uh, I don't know what I you're talking about. They're like your before, crew. It's like, just because I'm like friends with somebody doesn't mean I can do everything. That, I mean, I didn't, I didn't condone like Ralph Dobson people or whatever. You know what I mean? Like, it is what it is, but. Allegedly. I didn't actually die. <laughs> well, allegedly. Yeah. Sorry, but. Yeah. Uh, but whatever. You know what I mean? It's like this, this is what I'm talking about. It's this whole idea of like guilt by association nonsense now with this guy, where it's like, I mean, did I do any of this stuff? Did I did I participate in any of this stuff? No. It's like, well, but Nick said this. Oh, but Milo did this. Like, do you have anything to actually say like to, to me or about me uh, or any criticisms of me, or, or do I have to sit here and try to defend every well, other fucking plan, planet person on the planet that you have a grudge with under the sun? Is that, is that what I have to do here, or what? How is that different than you trying to lump me in for the things that Mike Enoch and Richard Spencer do? I mean, because I've, you invited them to your event, I'm holding you accountable for your actions. America first or the alt right? That's for sure. If you look at the things that uh, I talk about, and I have been trying I don't look at the to find you talk about you're fucking nobody. You're to be real, but... in Charlottesville for the last five years. And you dumped on me for your petty political gain. And Nick Fuentes did. I can bring up what Nick Fuentes was saying. I mean, I brought up. Go talk to Nick Fuentes about it, man. I'm not Nick. I mean, again, this is what I'm talking about. It's like you you have all these like criticisms of against Nick, and you want to like use me as like some proxy or whatever. I'm not. I'm not his fucking assistant. I don't work for Nick. Nick doesn't fucking pay me. I'm not out here to fucking sit here and, and. uh, well, yeah. I, I, <laughs> like, I, I, like, do you want me to fight? You want to write him emails? Do I have to write, like, sift through his fucking emails, answer his fan emails for him? Is that is that my job? Now, I listened apparently? to the beginning of the show, and you were just kissing his butt repeatedly. Yeah, he's my friend. What a great person you are. Yeah, he's, a, a he's my friend. Absolutely. So, why isn't it a valid topic now to talk about what great people you are? that, you know, you took advantage of uh, our civil liberties being violated in Charlottesville to build your own brand. Let me just read, like, what the, the difference was between 2017 and 2018. Fuentes, what an incredible rally here in Charlottesville. We took mace, pepper spray, feces. They sent in the National Guard counter-protesters and had the governor declare a state of emergency, all to silence us. Uh, they know the state. You can call us racist, white supremacists, Nazis, and bigots. You can disavow us on social media from your uh-huh. cushy campus reform job. And it goes on. And then in the next so year, now, in so now I have to defend Nick Fuentes tweets from five years ago. Like, that's what I have to do now? Well, well he's like, actually in your thing. Come on, this you is ridiculous. Going to the hip. You said you're not just uh, online buddies. You hang out in real life and what great, yeah. cozy people you are, you know? Uh-huh. So, yeah, so you, I you were criticizing my tweets from five years ago. So I was about to talk about the 2018 do. rally that you brought me on to basically diss me and throw shade on me at in 2018. That event does what you guys are doing 
long before you did. You're ripping it off. I had a multi-ethnic coalition that was there to stand up for the rights of the Charlottesville marchers in 2017. I had white people, I had black people, I had Jews. Dude, just, I take had the L, dude. just take the well, L, dude. Just take the L. Charlottesville's a disaster. Just take the fucking L at this point, man. Just move finish. like grow as a Don't person and move on. All right, let him finish. It's fair. It's fair. Go ahead. Let him finish. Go ahead. All right. So as we were marching, we were being attacked by Antifa in the media, and you guys – you and Fuentes were on there calling us honeypots, calling us fat, uh, feds, and all this other shit while, you know, we're being attacked in the streets. It's not right. And you guys know what happened. You know we were set up by the police. It's wrong. And I've defended the January 6th people many, many times. I don't mean to imply that the January 6th people, uh, for the most part, did something wrong, but I do think that the e-celebrities who are promoting this thing have been uh, have gotten off the hook, especially those who set, had such uh, different criticisms of Charlottesville at the time. Mm-hmm. Look, man. Go ahead. Just, yeah, go ahead, Pearson. Look, I get it, man. Uh, you're pissed off about Charlottesville, but it, that was five years ago, man. It was five years ago. Can we, you have to move on to a certain point where you can grow from this as a person, learn from your mistakes, and move on. And, I, and I'm not trying to be mean. Look, I'm not trying to be spiteful here. I'm, I'm, I'm honestly telling you this from one human being to another because I, I genuinely – I don't hate you. I don't think you're an evil person, and I, I really don't – even though you're coming on here slandering me and telling me all this shit, I really don't think you you're don't like an evil know. guy, man. And you you're not going to interrupt me. This isn't going to work. Okay? This is what I'm talking about. This is anytime you try to show these people any sort of like charity or grace – uh, this is how they act and respond, man. Just take a chill pull for a minute. Let me and sit down. Let me you talk to you. Man, man, man. You're not going to sit here and argue with me and try to over talk me. It's not going to happen. I'm going to keep talking. You're you not going to get what you're though. trying to say here. I'm, you can keep talking and everything and everything else. Not going to happen. But look, man, you you, you got to move on from this thing, man. I I didn't think Charlottesville was a good idea from the beginning, and I said so as much. It's, it's, it's pretty not well about documented. On. And again, you're let not going to talk over me. It's not going to happen. Don't stop him. Don't talk over me. Okay. I don't, I don't even need a moderator, okay? I'm just an endless talking machine at this point, okay? You talk uh, I think over me. Again, you're not, I'm going to finish my point, and you're just going to shut the fuck up, or we're going to be here all night, man. I, I don't know how many times ahead, I'm going to explain this to you. you. Say. Yeah, I, I will. Thank you for the permission, faggot. Shut up. All right? Take a chill pill. Calm down. But... I do legitimately. I mean, I, my heart bleeds for you, for the people that got persecuted at Charlottesville. Even even people I don't like, like Christopher Cantwell, Patrick Casey. I hate these guys. You know what? I pray for them though, because it sucks. They absolutely got martyred by the state, and it sucks. But you have to be able to recognize that we live in a climate where, yeah, it's not fair, and it sucks. It, it sucks. I and I agree with you on this. Yeah, the police probably set you up. Yes, all of these things happen. But the problem with Charlottesville was that you guys didn't take into any of this into account in the planning ahead of time, and you should have. And that was the point that I was trying to make from the very beginning of this thing. This this is not some free state where everything works out the way that we want it to. This the, the, there is clearly a thumb on the fucking scale on one side versus the other. And we have to operate as such. And that's been my, my criticism of the alt-right from the very beginning. They they just went out carelessly acting like, oh, but if they do this, this isn't fair. This isn't right. Yeah, no shit, it's not right, man. We get that. And that's how you have to operate, and that's how you have to think. And I, I and I do sincerely think the Charlottesville shit fucked you up. And I, and, I, and I mean this from the bottom of my heart. Even though you hate my fucking guts, I do legitimately feel bad for you. And I, and I hope that one day you can reconcile that and, and move on from it. I really do. I think this is a big hang up for you emotionally and personally. And I get that. I totally get it. It's a very traumatic thing for you. And I'm not trying to like talk down to you or anything like that. I'm talking to you man to man. I, I do legitimately feel bad for you. And I hope that you can build some sort of happiness out of this, but you've got to let it go, man. I'm sorry. You just do. Okay. Can I please have my turn? He's not my psychotherapist. Okay. He doesn't need to. I'm not trying know, to be your therapist. I'm trying to talk to you like a human being and show you a little bit of compassion. Thank you, care. Thank you for your, your great words of advice about moving on. Okay, buddy. But I still have lawsuits against the Charlottesville government, you know, that, that are in appeals on the fourth circuit, uh, for, you know, the Western district of Virginia. This and is I legitimately hope you win, man. Really do. Whether, whether the police have an obligation to protect protesters from violence. So I can't just move on. I have many things in my personal life that I've done that I've moved on, you know, from Charlottesville. But uh, there is an enormous responsibility that is placed on me to make this thing right. And the reason that I'm angry with you and with uh, the Groypers in particular is I feel like you guys, even though many of you were there, Fuentes was there, Baked Alaska was there, 
you did not back us up. You did not help us uh, to uh, publicize what was going on with our legal cases to uh, make sure the community was there and supporting yeah, us. Job, man. We've been, you guys took advantage of it and basically shifted on a dime from saying that our uh, rights were violated to saying that, you know, we were feds and we're psychopaths and this kind of stuff. Um, you, you don't know that I've been in a legal battle against some of the most powerful people in the United States for five years. You may have vaguely heard about a lawsuit that was filed against uh, the Charlottesville uh, organizers, but you don't know this was Roberta Kaplan, who is somebody who has sued Donald Trump. Uh, you don't know that uh, these people were funded by uh, the people in the Jeffrey Epstein network, Reed Hoffman, the founder of LinkedIn, who's a billionaire. Um, you don't know the hedge fund managers were uh, funding this and all of the precedent that it's setting for the fact that, you know, if you defend yourself from violence against hecklers, that you don't have a right to self-defense. And that's why I have to fight it. That's why it's not just some casual thing like I get drunk on a stream and uh, say I want to rape somebody. Oh, well, let me move on, you know. Uh, it's a, a serious deal that has adult responsibilities. And so all I'm trying to do is say that I think that it was really unfair for you guys to try and knife the Charlottesville people in the back. And you know what happened. Bates knows he was there. Uh, Fuentes knows he was there, and that's the point that I'm trying to make. I think it was all a game when you had me on the Weekly Sweat those years ago and oh, yeah. uh, ambushed me because you didn't yeah, know that your own people would make the same mistake and go into January 6th. But if you had taken some time not to be so judgmental towards us and tried to learn from those of us who were not hostile to you at the time, I wanted to be your friend. I came on there, and you and your co-host and I were joking about video games, and I thought, this guy is going to be my buddy. And I've never felt so betrayed, and that's why I remember that to this day. Mm -hmm. Well, hey, man, you know, look, I still stand by it because I think our organizing in the Charlottesville is an absolutely retarded idea. And to be quite frankly with you, I just thought that it was a really scumbag move that you were trying to leak private documents to me from Richard Spencer. I'm sorry. I think that's it's a very scumbag news. Did that happen? Well, wait, he made an accusation about you leaking his DMs. Did that happen? Yeah, I mean, he, he sent me a whole, like, file folder. Well, yeah, well, I'm asking him. I mean, I don't know. Like, you, you kind of laid it at his feet that that was a dishonorable thing. I mean, what do you say to that? Uh, that's a charge he's made against you, Jason. I mean, I don't well, I care either way. That earlier. Yeah. I was talking about text messages that were reported on and in the news that were part of our court case where Richard Spencer was basically saying uh, to his uh, consigliere, Eli Mosley, uh, basically accusing me of being Jewish and saying, we're going to take this event from him and saying, I'm in control of the event now. So w when there's all this blame to be laid at people and people are saying, for me, that I was uh, the, the main guy at Charlottesville, it's just not accurate. And I have a right to defend myself and say, look, these guys were scheming on me behind uh, the scenes, and I was not in charge of the event. It, it makes no sense for somebody to say, uh, oh, well, this uh, publicly uh, released and reported on text exchange, you have some obligation to protect these uh, treacherous bastards who stabbed you in the back. Uh, no, I have a right to defend my reputation. Now, I think that it's just it's okay. in a hot exchange here, and he's trying to find a way to answer the— Well, uh, well no, that I might mean, have been what he generally thought at the time. Uh, but anyway, go ahead. You can answer to that, Beerson, if you want. Well, I didn't, first off, I didn't know that these were, like, right. publicly available things. So you, you get a fucking file folder full of, like, text messages and shit, you know what I mean? It's like, hmm— you know, it's like I, I just saw this very scumbag movie. I didn't I didn't know that these were like publicly available or not. You know what I and mean? And I don't know the so. history either way, so I can't sit here and be the guy who says this is how it was. Uh, well, because yeah, I was in jail for something else at the time. Yeah, I'm taking that as word here. You know? Right, I don't know either way. I was in jail. <laughs> Thank just, God I was not in Charlottesville. For sure. Just so. go just Google <laughs> Daily Progress Richard Spencer text messages and you'll see the the article that's about it and it should have the embedded pdf with the court documents and the literal text messages that, that i sent to you in there okay hey, i'll take your, your or, word for it but at the time i did not know that those were like public i thought this was like some real like actual like behind the scenes text messages shit that you were wanting me to leak and i thought that was a real scumbag move okay you, you know what? My, maybe my, my mistake i'm trying I'm, try I'm like giving you one here man just take it okay
Yeah, we could have, you know, I, I can see a little bit of both sides, honestly. Uh, and I know how he feels because I talked to him about this before. It's like he organized Charlottesville and then, you know, it felt like he was left on the soldier left behind, I guess, you know, type thing. Where, but, you know, also, again, it was Charlottesville. Uh, it wasn't, uh, you know, I could understand people getting away from that thing <laughs> as quickly as possible too, you know, right? Um, yeah. Um, it's kind of a thing where, you know, if you were running daily Charlottesville phone, I was, I'll be honest, I had you on the show uh, to talk about your lawsuit and you, and you talked about your, your fundraising and all that. I, there was some questions about whether I was going to do that uh, because I thought, and I even talked to you about it. I was like, I don't know, man. You know, I support what you're doing, uh, but this, you know, it's a dangerous maneuver uh, for me. Uh, now I ended up being fine. I did it because I, Thought it was the right thing to do, but uh, I could also see, you know, oh, fuck this guy's radio, right? Radioactive, like uh, n- nothing personal against you, but that's I could see people saying that. So I guess I see both sides of. It. But anyway, um, go ahead, Kessler, and I'll let Beer well, get in, and we'll do TTS, yeah, got, and we'll finish this up. Actually, I don't disagree with a lot of the things you guys are saying about this. You know, uh, Charlottesville obviously was a disaster. You know, and some of the people that were there weren't good people. Uh, But I disagree on some of the assumptions about, like, we should have known at the time. Charlottesville was the first of its kind. And at that time, we were still, like, living in this gray area where the ACLU still supported uh, free speech for political dissidents. And we'd had this long storied history of protests for both the far left and the far right, where the ACLU was even supporting Nazis and police had. Traditionally, that's what they've done. Yeah, traditionally, the ACLU has. That's, I mean, you know, that's why they used to have a lot of respect until they turned into a partisan hack organization and now they, they don't even fulfill what they were, you know, what their whole purpose is basically to defend free speech at every fucking turn. Um, Anyway, go ahead. Sorry. And that has never happened before like that. When in American history, like, there were some police stand downs at Berkeley, but it was never the nuclear level uh, shit show at Charlottesville. And on top of that, there's stuff that, like, how can you lay the blame for what happened with the guy driving the car in the crowd? I don't want to get into debating that whole well, thing, and I- but that – that is one difference. We all, as protesters, got blamed for that, and it happened after the event was over, like hours after. And so part of that radioactive level uh, shit that peaked on me and everybody else is totally unfair. We didn't know that guy. We didn't put uh, his foot right. on the gas, but we've had to suffer for that. And if that one incident hadn't happened, Charlottesville and history would be totally different. Okay, but here's the thing, man. It's like, I, and I remember this pretty vividly, that Nick even shouted out the crowd fund for, for James Fields. So my chat said that, and I was going to bring that up. I don't know. I didn't see. I believe it. If they were, I don't say anything a lot about that. But yeah. and, and, and like, uh, I don't know. This this whole idea of like, you're now you have a grudge against Nick and America First or whatever because of January 6th because we acknowledge that Charlottesville was a bad idea. And yeah, I mean, and Nick was there. He didn't he didn't realize it at the time, too. I mean, I got invited to go and I kind of had, you know, not, not to fucking break my arm, pat myself on the back here, but I kind of had the foresight not to fucking go to it um, because I didn't think it was a good idea. And I turned out to be right and totally vindicated on that. Uh, but I mean, Nick paid a, t- a huge price for going to Charlottesville, too. I mean, he got kicked out of school for it. And he's been branded like a white nationalist. Plus, it's on his resume. Yeah, they always say he was at Charlottesville, right? That's a, yeah, they even Vinti, so even Vinti, even Vinti the other day on the film, they're like, she was at Charlottesville. Idea, clearly, but are you willing to admit that January sixth was a bad idea? I mean, yeah, clearly. I mean, I think. It, don't get me wrong. I think it was it was pretty fucking cool. But at the same time, yeah, no, it definitely is never a good idea to break the law either. You know what I mean? And you can ha- you know you can have a sort of like nebulous sort of definition of what that is. I don't think that anybody that that went into that Capitol building should should have paid the price that they're that they're being paid. It's pretty clear that they're being targeted by the United States government. Right. And I fully support those people. But I've always said from the get go, I fully support the, the, the most of the rank and file people that went to Charlottesville, too. And they got caught up in this stuff, man. The problem was the organ, the organizers and the, and the people that they chose to invite, because once again, you bring these sort of very high volatile people and put them in a group with one another and throw in Antifa and pepper spray and tear gas from the police. And it's never going to be a good idea. And you can sit there and say like, Oh, nothing like this has ever happened before, but there's been clear uh, events where Antifa has stormed in protest before. I don't know why this is like, I mean, dude, Antifa was going to just random fucking Trump rallies in 2016, giving them shit. You know what I mean? Like you could say, yeah, maybe not in the dissident, right? This has never happened before, but this was happening to the right as a whole for a very long time. 
Okay. So to sit there and like feign ignorance was like, oh, well, we didn't know any better. Oh, shucks. Uh, I think that's disingenuous, man. I mean, this was this was a climate for just normal Trump supporters. How do you think it's going to be when you get Richard Spencer and David Duke there? You know, come on, that's ignorant. And the, and, the, and the big problem that you're really overseeing here is that you wanted to do it again, man. You wanted to do it again after the first one failed miserably. You're like, well, we need to go back and be a, uh, do a show of force. No, no. just take the no. L and move on. You're wrong. I didn't say show of force. Don't put words in my mouth. And like I already said, I... I think I showed tremendous bravery under the circumstances to do the event in D.C. in 2018. And I corrected a lot of the mistakes that were made then. Like I said, people took control of Charlottesville from me in 2017. It wasn't my vision. I certainly don't want people out there chanting, Jews will not replace us, and all this stupid stuff, using the N-word. I'm not for that. Uh, that was totally okay. So then, why, then why did you invite good. people like fucking well, Mike Enoch like, and Richard Spencer fair, then, if you didn't want Hold that? On, you know what I mean? Like it's retarded. You have like let, fucking let, David let Duke finish. on the poster for this let thing. Come fair. on, man. You said I want to do it again. Look at how the 2018 event uh, turned out. Nobody got, nobody arrested. Doctor, we had nobody, nobody met. Coalition people. The the news stories were only positive for the right, not just for me and my group of people, <laughs> but generally. All the stories were about Antifa attacking journalists. And I made sure to tell people that you had to have total nonviolence, not even self-defensive violence is acceptable. So I think we totally corrected the mistakes there. I think your, uh, your criticisms are totally unfair that I just wanted to do it again. I also wasn't inviting the same people. There was no Cantwell. There was no Painovich. There was no Spencer. It was no e-celebrities, which is a a big thing I've learned. And part of the problem. So nobody showed up. (laughs) No. Yeah. Other than Ralph, Ralph is awesome, and he's a legendary (laughs) broadcaster. I don't think of him as just an e-celeb. He's like a legendary broadcaster. But but a lot of these people, like your Spencer, they're just egomaniacs, and they don't let normal. Uh, average Joes and Janes do their job of uh, organizing a protest. You look at the, what the truckers are doing in Canada. There's no egos there. There's no e celebs. It's just people getting the thing done. But you, so, so you I totally concede my point that it was a total people. fucking mistake. Then, like that, so you agree with me then that, that you fucked up the first time? Yeah, I did. I made a lot of mistakes. But, okay, you know, that's the I, beef, I was man. Idealistic. <laughs> And like, he even wait, said maybe there was a, a miscommunication. Now, wait, hold on. He even said maybe there's a miscommunication. He didn't realize where the text come from. Maybe we can have a, you know, some type of, I won't say come together moment, but, uh, you know, it's, it's been a long time, right? Uh, things happen in the fog of war. Um, and you know how it is. These things are factionalized, too. We argue about the shit all the time. Um, so maybe it's just, you know. An, an honest parting of the ways, right? They could have, if things had broken a different way, wouldn't have happened, right? Uh, I don't think either one of you guys are bad guys, right? There's no, there's no real malice there. Um, I'm, an, I'm evil, nigga. I'm an evil, nefarious <laughs> motherfucker. Okay, Ralph. I'm a menace. That's what Nick <laughs> Nick called me the other day. I'm thinking about getting a shirt with that. Just menace, giant letters right there on the shirt. <sighs> anyway, well, I don't know. Well, That's, I, don't, I don't. Go ahead. I don't know that we. have totally ironed out the issues here. No, I didn't uh, say that. I think think he's calmer than he was a few years ago. Like, it was vicious. It was, like, inhuman the way he treated me. Like, I was just like... Get over it, dude. Like, he's not acting quite that way. I can see a glimmer of humanity in in him now. He's a little bit more humbled. And uh, I've sort of gotten this out of my system here. But, uh, so... I'm not going to be heavily focused on it, but this was something that I was very upset about. Well, I hope, you know, we had a chat here. I think, yeah, I'll forgive you. Don't worry about it. I forgive you. I forgive forgive you too. Well, that's good. Can we? Yes. Yes. It finally happened. We had ultimate forgiveness here on the kill stream on the 1000th episode for fuck's sake. Amazing, ladies and gentlemen. Kessler, I appreciate you calling in, sir, and I do wish you the best. Hey, and, yep. I, and I mean this sincerely. I, I legitimately do hope you win your appeals, man. No no joke. I'll be praying for you. All right. Adios. Thank you, sir. Appreciate that. That was heartwarming. Wow. Okay. Wow. Just go with it. All right. Now let's <laughs> – <laughs> Let me – Went from calling me a pedophile to – 
forgiving each other. <laughs> did have, that was quite the roller coaster, I have to say. Oh, boy. All right. Now, we did have a couple super chats. I'm sorry. I just couldn't let those bing bing during. That was primo stuff. Uh, and so I did have to turn them off. Uh, Would have made more money. You, you really say, bro, I hate to interrupt. You can sure. really say we're, we're, we're uniting the right here. That's true. <laughs> This is Unite the Right 3 right here, baby. That's it. Charlottesville's our next stop. That's the only answer. We have to. You're a failure. has brought you back to me. Uh, all right. Mr. Leon sent $10. Jason Kessler is a confirmed loser and a failure who uses Ambien, liquor, and Xanax. Now, wait. Hold on. Whites deserve better. Let's not Please use those. Hold people. on. This is important. We don't want to bring those up. Fuck that guy. <laughs> yeah, hold on. Uh, uh, I'm not sure if we want to examine those type of issues. Thank you for watching this clip. This is the CACA Remember to like and subscribe.